All right. Uh, greetings, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Inca weekly seminar. Uh, today we have with us Shyam uh, Damapurkar, uh, who is a grad student at uh, Southern University of Science and Technology doing quantum information. And uh, he is going to tell us about quantum walks. Uh, take it away. Hello. Thank you. Thank you so much for the invite and uh, uh, let's start with the uh, title itself. So it is uh, quantum walks as thermalizations with the application to the fullerene graphs. Uh, uh, this is a joint work with Oscar Delston uh, and uh, where we try to link thermalization with the quantum walk uh, based on uh, cons under the consideration that the systems we are considering, they are fullerene graphs. So what the title means is like quantum walks. Quantum walks are uh, analogs of classical random walk, uh, where like instead of taking like, you know, uh, time evolution to be a matrix of transition probabilities between nodes on a graph, the time evolution is basically given by a unitary matrix with complex transition amplitudes. And uh, normalization is, as you all might know, it is a process by which a system approaches a steady state and stay close to steady state uh, for later times. And appropriate ensemble provides, like for example, you know the uh, Gibbs state. Uh, so that is basically an appropriate ensemble provides some microscopic, microscopic parameters by which the equilibrium state is determined. And it is given as follows. And the Fullerian graph. Fullerian graph is a graph with each node uh, has three adjacent nodes to it. And uh, it is made up from pentagonal and varying hexagonal structures. Uh, you will see in some coming slides that what I mean by Fullerian graph in more details. So, the aim and motivation for this research is to address this long running question of whether the subsystems of isolated quantum systems can thermally equilibrate. Uh, and to understand what is the role of quantum walks in the foundation of statistical mechanics and uh, the question about the universality of the Gibbs state. And to create a concrete bridge between the study of cell thermalization of quantum systems and that of quantum computation via quantum walks uh, to show that there is actually a, a there is actually a connection between these two uh, streams and lastly to show that how quantum walks can be used to prove the universality of the eth relation eth is eigenstate thermalization hypothesis uh, uh, that relation we are trying to prove using quantum walks so to give an illustrative idea, we'll look at this example. So what is equilibration? Equilibration is basically relaxation to a steady state and staying close to that state for almost all times. So basically from like thermalization is basically equilibration, but the steady state uh, can be different than the one we are saying always like the Gibbs state. Uh, so in this uh, picture, if you see uh, this graph, here, uh, pictured as blue uh, nodes and red nodes, and there is one, uh, there is also a pink one, is basically uh, considered as a, a quantum system. And what it says is like, you know, time average probability of walk starting at the node 20 and coming back to itself uh, over, like, you know, if you run it for time and you average it over the time uh, for like for, uh, here the time is given on x-axis like for finite time uh it fluctuates around the limiting value what does limiting value mean here is basically the uh, the limiting distribution of a quantum walk over this graph and this basically shows that over a finite time if you look at this fluctuation it will go close to the steady state uh, and the steady state in this case is basically the limiting distribution over 
of a quantum walk over this Fullerian graph. This is a Fullerian 30 graph, uh, where you can see, as I said before, that uh, each node has three adjacent nodes to it. And uh, you see there is this pentagonal system, like there are pentagonal structures, and here there are hexagonal structures. And how, like, it is kind of like, uh, you can imagine it as like, if you go on wearing these hexagonal structures later, then it will form a shape of tube, something like that, which you will see later. So uh, first, let's discuss about walks. So I'll try to go through continuous time quantum, uh, continuous time random walks, then the uh, continuous time quantum walks. And what I mean by the how to apply this to get the limiting distribution and this, this kind of question, so or a C60 graph. So continuous time random walk. Uh, so consider like a graph G with vertices V and edges E. Then uh, the probability P uh, is the unit time probability to move to its adjacent vertices, okay? And that is fixed and time independent. So uh, in time tau, the probability is tau times P such that this tau times P has to be less than zero or less than one. So, so you consider, you then quantize this uh, system as like in n-dimensional Hilbert space. How do you do that? You take a vertex and uh, you consider it as a basis uh, in this way, uh, such that, uh, you know, this, is com this becomes a computational basis. And the Hamiltonian is given as follows. So the entry of a Hamiltonian is uh, AB is basically minus P if A is not equal to B and AB belongs to graph G. That is, if there is an edge between two vertices on the graph, then it is minus P. Uh, if there is no edge between them, it is zero. And if they are the same vertices, then it is D, a time, D of A times P, where D of A is a degree of a vertex. For example, the graph I just showed you, uh, the degree of that vertex was three. So in that case, it will be three. And the probability to go from A to B in time tau, then as I said before, it is basically tau times P. And this formalism, uh, formalism is taken from quantum computation and decision trees by Furry and Gutman paper. So this, then you can see that probability to go from A to B, you can write it as from that uh, differential equation, uh, sorry, uh, from the Hamiltonian uh, evolution uh, in the process is like minus tau times the uh, value from Hamiltonian. And then the second order equation, uh, second order terms in the time, that is with respect to time. What is this is basically like you see, when this, this value uh, here, when there is an edge, this value is negative, if you see from the previous slide, uh, sorry, minus P. So the probability here is tau P because there is minus here accommodated. And when it is uh, A is equal to B, this will give you one minus tau times DP, which is again, I showed you from in, on the previous slide. So this is a classical Markov process for time t and small time tau. We can write this as uh, equation three. And then you see, if you move the p b a on this side and uh, just basically you will like look at it in at infinitesimal time, then you'll see that this is a differential equation and the solution is given in equation five. The probability to go from a to b is e to the minus h t and then this delta function is there since we are in a continuous time set. So we can also check that this sum is one over like, basically if you are at a vertex and there are some k nodes adjacent to it, then sum over that probability should be one. So this is about classical continuous time uh, random walk. Now, what is there in quantum walks? In quantum walks, you take the previous classical equation and you put the i on the left-hand side. And there is, of course, sure analytical reason to this, but uh, to understand it simply, it is basically uh, like you look at equation six and then you give your initial state and you have the same Hamiltonian. And the solution of that is basically e to the minus ist, which is Schrodinger evolution. 
and where psi zero is the initial state at time zero. Now, uh, what this uh, quantum Mock operator looks like, it is a unitary as we all expect. And if you see H I defined uh, previously, that is basically uh, an adjacency matrix, uh, sorry, Laplacian of the graph. Uh, what does, what do I mean by Laplacian is, uh, uh, let's call Laplacian operator L, which is equal to D minus A, where D is the degree matrix, where the diagonal of all this matrix is the degree of each vertex and rest entries are zero. And A is the adjacency of the matrix. Adjacency uh, tells you that uh, if there is an age, age in two vertices, then the corresponding entry is one, otherwise it is zero. So you see that H was Hermitian or real symmetric in this case. So this operator e to the minus ist becomes unitary. And the quantum walk starts at some initial state, evolves with this unitary, and then uh, we measure at some state to calculate the quantum amplitude, uh, to look at the quantum amplitude and that mod square becomes the probability. And the quantum amplitude is given by equation eight. And uh, if you see uh, this, uh, that is, it is not difficult to verify that the, this satisfy all this probability conservation. And uh, mm, like, uh, if you see, this is basically a probability uh, like the entry in the problem probability matrix P defined. So for time T. Now, uh, here the row sum and column sum is one and these things can be verified easily. So what is the main thing here is unitary evolution uh, cannot guarantee you that a stationary distribution is there since unitary is basically an isometric. So it doesn't really, you know, uh, like the distance between two vectors remains the same over, let's say it is going on over a unit, uh, a unit circle in the complex plane, then this will, the distance will not go. Uh, so it will always they uh, keep moving over that unit circle. And the thing is, there is no such thing as stationary distribution in this way. So the way out for that to look at is like to take the time average probability and the time average limiting, uh, time average distribution. So what, what the, how do you do it? So you basically uh, look at it in on some interval, zero to capital D, and then you time average it in continuous uh, sense, it is basically the integration and then one by T dt. So this is basically time average probability. So what we get is basically, uh, like we don't know whether it will, stay on particular state like, uh, let's say, psi stationary. But we know that if we take average over the time, then there will be some state to, by which it will fluctuate around that for almost a lot of time. Now, the thing is, if you take a uh, limit of equation 10 as t tends to infinity, then you come to equation 11, uh, which is already there in the literatures uh, of quantum work. Uh, and mixing problems. The limiting distribution basically, uh, as t tends to infinity, it takes out all time dependent terms. And what you rem what you get is basically like equation based only on eigenvectors of the Hamiltonian. So these are the eigenvectors of the Hamiltonian. And where this k belongs to CJ, what it means is like, you know, you collect all the uh, eigenvectors corresponding to same eigenvalue because there might be uh, like a repetition in the eigenvalues. And then you combine them, uh, you do this uh, mod square thing, and then you go over all such repetitions collectively. And this is basically limiting the distribution as time space t tends to infinity, uh, which serves purpose as like, you know, a sort of a limiting, uh, like a stationary distribution in some sense, in quantum walk summary. And uh, it is not necessarily to be like, you know, the way we always see as like any form or something like that. It might have any form. And now let's go towards on what kind of graphs we are going to look at these things. So the graph in the picture is like a buckyball graph. 
as we all know, it is C60 graph, the, uh, the graph uh, C60 um, molecule, the graph structure of this looks like it. This thing, there are 60 vertices on it. And here also you can see that there are like, you know, pentagons and hexagon structures. So it is a fuller in C60. And uh, the thing is, we are trying to see limiting distribution on this graph. And how it look like is this. So what does it, what this graph means is like you start at vertex one and you measure at all other vertex 60. And you do that for all starting vertices and all like measure at all the other vertices. And then you plot this limiting distribution. So you see there is a cross-like structure uh, that, is, that is due to symmetry of the graph itself. Uh, but the point here is like, if you see, uh, if you start somewhere on, let's say, I say 60, because it will be more clear here, and you look at all the, what is the probability of being at 1 to 60, uh, then this fluctuates quite a lot. And there is a peak only at like 1 and 60. So there is something like, it is not basically in some way the uniform or anything. It is, the limiting distribution is quite different in this case. And uh, this will help us to connect it to the thermalization thing later. So this is the limiting distribution in quantum work and the limiting distribution uh, we defined earlier, which only depends on eigenvectors. So now we will get into quantum equilibration part. So in quantum equilibration, uh, what we look at is first quantum equilibration model quantum work and quantum equilibration, how they do relate, then quantum equilibration bound, you know, we'll talk about, and how Fullerian graphs uh, can be looked as isolated quantum systems. So let's look at quantum equilibration more. So consider isolated quantum system uh, denoted by the Vitalik H and with the decomposition as, you know, subsystem and a bath, which is a tensor for the top subsystem and above. And uh, let's psi be a pure state on the total system. Then the corresponding density matrix is given by rho t. And the bath and the system state is like you trace out the system and you get bath state and you trace out the bath, you get the system state as shown here. Now, the time average state of the system is given like this, you know, or omega. What does that mean is basically rho t you have, and you basically you want to look at what is the time average state of the system, uh, which is another way of saying like, you know, this is time average state, which is nothing but an equilibration state in the uh, equilibration. Uh, uh, when you define equilibration and this uh, omega uh, is basically like it shows like, over the time, over the period of time, if you look at uh, how the system evolves, uh, it basically goes close to uh, this omega over the time, or it remains close to omega. And uh, over the bath and over the system, again, you look like, you know, you trace out system and trace out bath and you look at W, sorry, omega B and omega S. And here, the only thing to know, I mean, the one of the points is like you know you can look at the effective dimension of the state and how do you look at it like you know you see how many pure states are uh, involved like in this row t so that is captured by this equation given here one by trace of rho t square so that way also you can take a lot of uh, ideas on how it is going to formalize or equilibrate sort of thing so how quantum work and quantum equilibration relates is basically consider a set of local observables, like projectors in our case. And uh, like projector, uh, this is set of projector O. And uh, then let's say, instead of considering F and let's say this is some finite graph G where X represents the uh, vertex. So then the projector is O X S. So then with an initial state rho naught, the expectation value of any projector O for some another vertex. Remember, in quantum works, we did that starting at one vertex and measuring it at another vertex and looking at the time average limiting distribution there. 
So you take any projector from this and you start at initial state and you try to see like expectation value of this observable O with respect to that. Then the stress O omega is basically like, you know, you, this equation, uh, equation 12. And this is nothing but, you know, I'm in time of sense is equation 13, which is a quantum walk limiting distribution equation. So this is nothing but uh, limiting distribution probability to go from X to Y. So it's a, it basically relates the uh, stress or like expectation value with respect to the equilibration time of rest state to the limiting distribution probability. So this is one of the key things to look at it here. And uh, so we will use this later to look at how it works with Fullerene graphs. Now, uh, the, there is this bound by short and other people uh, uh, like quantum equilibration bound about like, let H be a time independent Hamiltonian and any represents a distinct energies. And rho t, you be the state we get after a time t evolution for any operator O on the state space. And then for this energy, any energy epsilon and time uh, tau, what it says is like there is a, how close it is with respect to that operator, how close is rho t to the uh, uh, time of rest state omega uh, in this uh, expect, uh, like averaging sense. It can be bounded by these quantities where D effective, I just explained how many pure states are there in this and any and epsilon tau is given. So this is this uh, like uh, oh, average over the interval zero to tau. So what it says is like how close it is to this omega in with respect to this observable O. And uh, what we got is basically, as I showed you before that there's this Fullerian graph uh, we are considering in the beginning at C60. If you do limiting distribution, uh, look at the limiting distribution and you basically, I showed you that how the time of state omega is related to limiting distribution. And if you consider observables as a position operator, then in this case, we show that the bound is quite tight, you see. So the average is given like this and the bound here is like, you know, very close to, like it is less than one and going very close, then, close to the um, zero in some sense, but not zero, but very low. So this bound holds in the case where we basically relates quantum walk to quantum equilibration in the way I showed just now. And this is a, a like very nice, uh, you know, connection, which we could, uh, um, basically verify in this uh, short uh, set, uh, setup or quantum equilibration and the bound given by these quantities. So then what we thought is like, you know, what if like, you know, how to look at it as quantum, uh, like what happens on subsystems, basically. So let's first see how Fuller, Fullerian looks at isolated quantum systems. So it is like Fuller in, in general is a graph with n vertices uh, and uh, for any n e1 greater or equal to n2, except not for like n is equal to 22. The Fuller in graphs under consideration, like mm, the graphs we consider, they are always in multiple of 10, it's like f20, f30, something like that. And full this graphs, as I showed you before, they are made up of pentagons and hexagons. So the pentagon numbers are fixed, like there are 12 pentagons and number of hexagons varies in multiple of five. So if it is F20, then there is no, uh, uh, like there are no hexagons, there are only 12 pentagons. And if it is F30, F40, then it goes like five, multiple of five. So we say that F uh, in general, F10 times K plus one is equal to F12 comma F times K minus some. Uh, as a compact equation. So these are the graphs we considered as isolated quantum system. 
Now, the question about the subsystem uh, we address in this section. And we say about like why subsystem do not thermalize. So in this case, we will look first how to write this isolated quantum systems uh, as subsystem and above the decomposition in the graph system and then the Gibbs state on the pentagon. And then we will look at the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis. And we will see, show that later, like, you know, how it does not hold for particular projectors, but it holds uh, for, you know, time and the average uh, projection, um, like the observer, position observer. So let's see, all these graphs as a subsystem and a bar, uh, you can see, uh, we will denote it by Fn. So the subsystem here is only one pentagon and the bar is the rest of the nodes, okay? So the pentagonal nodes are subsystem and the rest of the nodes are path. So the Hilbert space here uh, is spanned by, now you see the basis here defined as like, you know, uh, so consider like, you know, there are n qubits then uh, when bj is basically a j place, there is one and rest is zero. So there are uh, basically n basis and we are not taking all of them, you see, there are on the combination, we are only taking such basis where uh, at jth position there is one and rest are zero. And there is one small possibility, uh, like, uh, sorry, there is a possibility of having no Walker situation. Like, you know, like since we are going to do quantum walk on them and then we uh, derive this, uh, we already derived the quantum walk and quantum equilibration with uh, like relation. So we will try to look at it from that perspective. The, as a quantum walker, there is a possibility that there is there will be no walker situation. So we add extra basis elements. And that is basically, uh, you can call it as B naught here, uh, where all them all of them are zero. And how it looks like is on subsystem, it is one, two, three, four, five, the pentagonal nodes, it looks like this. And for rest of them nodes, it looks like, you know, B naught B. Uh, in the respective basis. So, so the allowed Hilbert space is basically spanned by this basis uh, B telix given here and B naught, where B naught is basically B S and tensor with B B. So each vertex of Fn has degree three. Okay. So, and so the adjacency matrix of H tilde will look like, you know, you act H tilde on Bj it should go to three nearby vertices, V, R, B, S, B, T, okay? Where I, S, T are between one to N. And we can write that H tilde is like, you know, H tilde S plus H tilde B plus H tilde int. Then where it is basically, this is interaction Hamiltonian, this is Hamiltonian of subsystem and so Hamiltonian on the path. So how do we write that? So H tilde S is basically H, S uh, tensor with identity where like it's, it acts trivially on the uh, path and, and the HS is defined as, you know, the basis of the subsystem uh, in that to go from K to J, uh, it is one if there is an H in the original graph Fn. And the these bases are not same uh, for J and K between one to five and zero otherwise. So this is basically the, the same like adjacency structure lifted in the tensors uh, kind of uh, the whole uh, Hilbert space uh, over the subsystem. And similarly, you could define like, you know, uh, this uh, for the bath. And now the catch here is like, you know, what happens to the no occur case? So the no occur case is like, there is no transition, uh, like amplitude, and there is no interaction between the basis of the, uh, like, on the pentagonal nodes with the no occur situation. So these all are said to be zero. And similarly, you could look at uh, Hamiltonian of the bath and uh, this uh, interaction Hamiltonian is defined in similar way. You could look at in uh, for more details in the paper. Uh, now, let's look at Gibbs state on this pentagon, okay? So the subsystem Ham Hamiltonian can be rewritten as follows, where like, you know, uh, this is zero times the bath 
uh, no current bar state and uh, direct sum with a5 where a5 is basically adjacency but that is normalized in this case so if it looks like you know blocks of 0 0 0 and then a5 and the eigenvalues of which is like you can see from here itself like this is first is 0 and the uh, rest are uh, basically lambda j which is cos 2 pi j by 5 and this comes from like you know if you look at it a5 it looks like a cycle of pi nodes so the eigenvalue eigenvector comes from there and the corresponding eigenvectors uh, are basically 100 0, 0, which is the p naught like the a conjugate and then lambda j is which is 1 by square root 5 0 1 omega j and this powers where omega is defined as e to the 2 pi i by 5. Now you look at the Gibbs state as I defined in the first uh, slide itself how the Gibbs state looks like. This is the 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 Gibbs state in equation 20 you see that um, this form how what we are interested in is like you know depending on time how this basically behaves so in a compact form it looks like question 21 so where beta is like uh, one by uh Boltzmann constant times the temperature so you see uh as the probability if we were interested in probability the probability at node j in this basis like node basis this is basically gamma s and jj like uh, the branched motion it's like when the sum uh like when you increase the beta like positively then the probability will is close to 0 0.2 for all the nodes okay that you can see uh, from the, the equation itself. Like, suppose beta goes to, uh, like, let's say infinity in or large for, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, for large beta. And this will go to zero, uh, whereas this will both will go to one, and this is two plus two, five. So that will be one by five. And that is basically uh, like 0 0.2. Um, yeah. So, and for no occur, it is very close to zero. And uh, this is the situation. The calculations are detailed. Calculations are not mentioned here. Uh, you can check it in this archive. Thank uh, you. One in footnote. I will. Uh, the title of the paper is same as the title of the talk. And for beta, very less, like you know, very small. Uh, it like going close to zero. Uh, this goes like one by six. Interestingly, when beta is very small, there is a probability very like one by six, which is in you know, no occur cases, you know, or no occur node. So as we expect, this Gibbs state effectively becomes the maximum limit state at very large temperatures, or like you know, that is basically what we expect in this case. But the time average probability. You see, now in this picture, that's this uh, orange and green indicates that, you know, this fuller in 30 to 130, what we say is like, you know, look at the like gamma n n. Gamma n n is basically uh, like last node probability. So for uh, Gibbs state, these are constant, you know. Uh, this is as 0 0.2 as I told you before, and this is uh, uh, 0 0.1 uh, by 6, I guess. So, yeah. But the equilibration, you know, uh, which is like, you know, but as a quantum or in quantum of sense, it is limiting distribution that basically varies, and that is not even close to this. And this we are talking about when the time like you know, tends to infinity. So it looks like. In average, also, this is not not even close to these plots. Uh, sorry, these values of Gibbs state. So, over the time, basically, what it says is like you know, this doesn't go to Gibbs state in the way we think as always, like you know, that uh, with respect to uh, the temperature. And uh, this is basically like a, 
limiting distribution gamma uh, uh, pi and n and uh, for polar in 30 to 130 for each last node we try to plot this and we show that if there is a like substantial gap in this and this is over the average not even like you know for finite time or something so to so like to carry this argument like gibbs state basically gibbs state is not attended the uh, we try to see it from the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis perspective to this relation. So what this relation says is like, uh, look at in the Hamiltonian eigenbasis, uh, like you write the O, uh, the observable where you are interested in. And uh, when you write that observable in this Hamiltonian eigenbasis, uh, you will see that if it is satisfied, then the diagonal of that uh, Hamiltonian, uh, uh, that uh, observable O, will be a smooth function. And uh, off diagonals will, like, basically uh, exponentially drop, kind of, like, you know, will, uh, will be very small values. So, in general, it is like uh, a function uh, depending on delta M. And then FM will look like, let's say, for a general uh, state, you look at psi t, which can be written in this way, uh, where CM is the like corresponding uh, coefficients of psi. And uh, this is the phase. Then you look at this uh, average, you can write it in like, you know, O, where M is not equal to M, and where M is equal to N kind of thing. Then you see if O is diagonally smooth, then you can take this out and the sum of this coefficient mod square is one because this is general state. And uh, so basically this will look like O M M M dash M dash kind of thing over time, the, the average. And the diagonal will go exponentially small. So ETH whole relation whole is basically implies uh, this scenario. And uh, we'll see if we consider observe, like in our case, if the projectors are satisfied, whether the projectors satisfy ETH or not. So the thing is, projectors does not satisfy ETH. And the main thing about this, like, you know, we showed that uh, if you look at the observable uh, or projector, sorry, O2, like projecting on the second side and in the C60 graph, then, Basically, the diagonal, now here again the same thing, like, you know, you look at this as in energy eigen basis of H, H is where the adjacency of C60 graph, then you plot this 60 cross 60 matrix, and you see that there is like diagonal is not at all smooth, and off diagonals are also quite significant. So basically, projectors does not satisfy, we, we uh, try to see that in like, you know, all nodes and for all nodes what we saw is like average is like you know very close to the value 0 0.07 which is same for all but the standard deviation is quite a lot i mean almost like more than average so it is fluctuating quite a lot you know uh, and this like this average is calculated uses using this form which is quite uh, like you know, just basically the average formula over the diagonal. And interestingly, we see that the node state in this energy eigen basis looks to a, a random state. So if we find a qualitative similarity when the node state is represented in hard random state with respect to orthogonal orientary groups, basically you choose, let's say 60, uh, oh, like orthonormal uh, vectors using R, R major, and then you do the same thing with the, like the way here it is done as an average. Uh, you will see that uh, they are also almost behaving sim in similar way. That the diagonal is not at all smooth, and the diagonal terms are also quite significant. So what we say is that like, you know this does not satisfy it which, uh, the projectors. But interestingly, it holds for uh, you know the. Uh, the position observable, uh, which is basically sum of projectors. So, 
and uh, this observability is given here like this and it holds like you know and because there is a symmetry in that earlier in the picture i showed you that you know uh, in the limiting distribution there are peaks and they are symmetric about like 30 somewhere because there is a cross like uh, uh, diagram uh, in limiting distribution of quantum ox or c16 so this basically shows that i mean this you can validate also that uh, there is a symmetry in itself with eigenvectors of the uh, the hamiltonian of the c60 graph and uh, if you look at this average on the diagonal uh, and use this relation then you could see that it is 61 by 2 um, by these calculations and uh, like due to symmetry, uh, basically. And uh, this symmetry here, given in this equation, uh, will it pops out like almost exact value. And in the plot also, we found the same thing. Like if you look O in the energy eigenbasis of H uh, of, for the 50 graph, then the diagonal is basically a smooth function of time, which is 30.5 and off diagonal, is basically significantly going down as soon as you go away from the diagonal. So this says that the ETH holds in this case, whether as it does not hold in uh, the projector case. And then we come to the conclusion that you know we what we showed here is like basically we demonstrated that there is a link between quantum Oxford graphs and self-thermalization. We show that this short utils bound, uh, shorts bound holds tightly indicating that the equilibration of some observable turns out to be uh, tight for the graph node observable, like the way we show. Uh, at the same time, if the walk begins in a graph node state, subsystem are far away from the Gibbs state, that is one of the main observ observations. And what this highlights is basically the fact that any hypothesis of system self thermalizing to Gibbs state is a quite strong assumption. And quantum walks on full range basically joins a list of quantum counterexamples, including like many, many body localizations. And it is also like, you know, a relation, it is relation here is surprisingly not too true for projectors, but. It is. It holds for the average position of the group, and yeah, that is the some of the results we got uh, in this whole process of linking these two ideas. Thank you. All right. Uh, so that was a great talk. Uh, unfortunately, our audience left uh so i will however ask you a question um yes. and hopefully people in the recording uh can uh and appreciate your talk uh, so do you have a picture to show for your subsystem and the system uh on on your graph yeah yeah, yeah. so in the first uh as an example, I showed here, it is like, you know, this pentagon basically represents subsystem and the rest of the uh, like graph nodes represent bath. And this is where we say this blue uh, green uh, edges are basically represents the interaction between. I see. So, uh, and is it for a graph like this that you find found your one fifth and one sixth probabilities? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you mean the probability is to go from first node to fifth node or sixth node, right? Uh, no, uh, no. Uh, so you were talking about the thermal yeah, yeah. Uh, Gibbs state uh, probabilities for low temperatures and for high temperatures. So and you found one fifth and one sixth. So was the graph like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, and uh, uh, basically. Uh, like in general, full I uh, was the, the main idea. And since this is a pentagonal setup, uh, in which you could see that, I mean, basically, it looks like as temperature increases that will give you uniform 
distribution, which should be uh, one by you know number of vertices, which is one by five. That's why one fifth is there. Whereas this uh, no occur situation we considered by which uh, when for the very low temperature, it looks like one six or that. Right. Uh, yeah, so I, I would find that very surprising. Uh, mm -hmm. But I suppose uh, if if it's kind of precisely defined what Gibbs state you're talking about, because so you introduced uh, the splitting between system and subsist and uh, uh, between system and, and the rest, right? Yeah. Uh, subsystem and the rest. And then you introduced yeah. A slightly modified Hilbert space where you have zero particles uh, allowed mm -hmm. for either, but you only live in a space where the total number of particles is one, right? Yeah. Good. Uh, um, total number, uh, uh, sorry, what did you say last? The last so time? essentially, your total number of particles is always one, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. if single, you single walk. Single check. Walk. So your Hilbert space is made by uh, two parts, right? Which is one uh, is the uh, uh, system and another is the, the, the subsystem and another is the rest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And each one of them can in principle be uh, in either the zero particle or noir particle state, but they're not in tensor product because your total number of particles is always one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, uh, you could complete it to a full tensor product if you just kind of extend it to the case where yeah. there is actually a zero particle everywhere and also two particles. Uh, yeah. But your amplitudes in those parts of the Hilbert space are always zero. It's just that this extension allows you to uh, compute something like the density matrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because it gives you the tensor products. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Correct. Yeah, thank you. So, it's um i suppose a naively i would expect that it is always um what is it so uh, the real uh gibbs state of the whole system is yeah. always um just uh, one over the total number of nodes that you have in mm -hmm. every uh, okay. every site independent of temperature but then if you consider uh the splitting of the hamiltonian and so something that acts only on the subsystem and then the hopping term between the subsystem and rest and the yeah. and the uh the something that only acts on the rest then the hamiltonian of your system is just this five sites right yeah and uh, like accumulates over these sites yeah, yeah. So actually, there is no terms that are acting on your zero kind of subspace that are within the Hamiltonian of the system. So it comes essentially as zero. Uh, yeah. So you have the X, this extra eigenvalue that is at zero. And mm -hmm. then you also have um, essentially whatever your hopping Hamiltonian gives you. Yeah. Yeah. So the Gibbs state of that indeed will get um somewhat complicated because uh essentially the energy of your uh, the zero state is just somewhere and then you, mm -hmm. you you somehow kind of have to mix it with your rest of your states so indeed i i wouldn't necessarily know what to expect of this hamiltonian but also um i suppose I don't think that the the probabilities you get from it would be particularly meaningful, because yeah. um, I guess what what I was what I'm getting at is the ETH and the entanglement entropy is usually uh, sorry and this kind of density matrices are usually used from anybody's system. However, here you're working with one particle that is doing the quantum walk on this graph, right? Yeah. So. I am not aware personally of uh, any kind of statements of ETH for a one particle uh, doing a, a quantum walk because mm -hmm. it's usually applied for many body, many particle system. Right? So do you know of any statements of ETH that actually talk about a, a single particle or uh, 
uh, problems? Actually, yeah, this is very interesting in the sense that, you know, uh, with, uh, with, this, with this same idea, like, you know, when you like, like this is a like this is an example where we set like you know what happens with the case of single party, but if you allow with the whole other place uh, like you know particles like the multi multi particle walk, then it's just lift the structure, and then we know that how ETH holds there. So this is one way to come down and see like what it is like says here, uh, whether it is like you know. Uh, like whether it uh, aligns with it or not, that is like, you know, um, I also don't know actually, like uh, with the previous ideas of how do you say no, I personally think that there is no reason for ETH to hold for a one particle system. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, even if you let many particles live on this graph, right? If you consider the second quantized case, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, this is an integrable system. So uh, the the thing about it is that uh, I think usually, uh, well, first of all, you need to figure out whether they're fermionic or bosonic. But yeah. either way, what you will find is that for things like local uh, po populations, like these projectors that you are measuring, the ETH will actually hold for this many particle oh. systems um yeah. however if you consider something that looks like a kind of local approximation for a momentum right so mm -hmm. you can try to measure a momentum of a particle uh locally then uh, for some of the eigenstates uh, since this is almost a conserved quantity in this uh mm -hmm. integrable model right you will measure something yeah. that's vastly different from a thermal expectation value which is zero so oh, that is the understanding of how ETH work, kind of not work for this integrable model that are just free particles on a graph like this. Oh. Um, yeah, so usually for position, it holds. That's why I was surprised that in your case, yeah. the, so all these populations that you're talking about, it, it actually didn't hold. I mean, it's kind of understandable that in a, in a eigenfunction of a single particle, you have those nodes so yeah. that there is... Um, something that lives there but um i suppose what usually happens when you have more than one particle is that you need to figure out um how do you want to resolve various degeneracies and which is actually yeah. something that you didn't really talk about so you have plenty of symmetries here right so yes, usually yeah. your eigenstates are not on their own they're degenerate yeah. so you need to figure out when you measure this uh yeah. this expectation values what to do with all those degeneracies but anyways, yeah. after all the dust settles and for many particles, usually the uh, kind of for things like a projector II, right? The kind of the occupation of a single node, the ETH mm -hmm. still holds, usually. That would be my intuition, right? Um, and I, I think it's surprising that what you found, that there was a deviation of it. But at okay. the same time, yes, uh, th th there may be some kind of in a single particle case, there's probably no way to just kind of argue about the degeneracy and, and symmetries so if you if you are in an excited state um, then there's nothing for it to really cancel with in some sense um anyways so maybe in this extreme case it actually doesn't yeah. hold I, I think that it is quite surprising yeah yeah but yeah you you explained it quite nicely i i liked it thank you <laughs> sure sure okay. yeah let's stop the recording here um and see uh, all of you next time yes <laughs>